Thanks for ordering this week and thanks for your support. We're thrilled to be cooking with you and for you at home. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. This week is gonna be super easy. So I've jumped ahead a little bit because your braised beef short rib and uh, your baby potatoes with the rosemary parmesan go in the oven for 20 minutes. So you didn't need to see me standing here waiting for it. So I put them in about uh, eight and a half minutes ago just to get a bit of a head start. And then why don't we uh, get rolling on the next ingredients. So we've got this beautiful parsnip and um, miso soup. Now miso is like the wonder ingredient in case you didn't know this already. Um, umami, which is the fifth taste bud, which is something that I just adore. It's that tastiness, that savoriness um, that is so great. And uh, miso is just jam packed with it. Um, and then that's uh, going in the soup. And we also want the demi glaze going on. And that's the amazing sauce, which also very high in umami flavoring uh, for uh, the short rib. So we're going to warm that guy up on uh, medium low. And we're going to warm the soup up on medium high until we get it uh, going on. Um, while that's happening, we can go ahead and actually plate the dessert, believe it or not, um, because we've got we've got uh, some time to kill. Um, tonight's dessert is a black sesame and honey pound cake. Uh, the chef was just raving about this beforehand because uh, Megan, our sous chef, is also our pastry chef, and she takes care of the desserts for the curated package. And uh, anyway, he was just blown away. Um, so we've got uh, this matcha and orange creme anglaise. So I'm going to put it on um, the bottom of the plate to get started. I always like to play with um, the quantity. So I asked for a little bit more in case we needed it. And then maybe save a little bit to drizzle on top. Now, I always love to garnish my uh, desserts. So um, I got some figs this week. Uh, to go with a special cheese plate I had on the weekend, and I had some left over. I don't know if you can see this. Maybe I'll move this over. So we're garnishing up here. So I'm going to top mine with a couple fresh figs, because why not? And any fruit that you have in the fridge right now will be great. You know, even if you slice up a little bit of apple or uh, have some fresh berries, just throw it on top of there. But that, that's looking pretty great. So we have our black poppy seed and um, honey pound cake <clears throat> with a matcha and orange creme anglaise. All right, let's see how we're doing. Make sure to stir your soup and make sure to stir your demi-glaze so it doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan and that the demi-glaze doesn't form um, any kind of skin on top. You know what, I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit, get that going. Um, okay, so dessert done over there. Um, I wanna talk about the wines tonight. So we've done sparkling again. So when pairing food and wine, it's very important to, to uh, consider texture, not just flavor. And so when you've got a soup, you need something a little bit different in texture. And that's why Connor this week chose some bubbles. Mm. I love this stuff. So this is a Prosecco Trevisia and uh, from Italy. There's a great big story about the, uh, the founder in uh, your description. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's just super tasty, bright. This is just not your sort of typical crappy bistro Prosecco. This stuff is like a great small artisanal producer and he makes wonderful stuff. Excuse me, there's my cat. He won't be <laughs> part of the filming tonight. Uh, okay, so make sure that we're stirring the soup. And my family has arrived back home early as well, so this uh, this is good. We better get on for um, the main course then. So we're going to do two tablespoons of canola oil, or in my case, grapeseed oil, for those of you who have watched this one before, and and get the pan nice and hot on medium high heat. And then we're going to put our broccoli in there um, and you want to brown it. So uh, my instinct as well is to just constantly saute things and move stuff around. But the chef is very big this week 
just let the broccoli brown on one side. So if there's flat sides on the broccoli, then make sure to do that. This guy is doing very well, so I'm gonna turn down the temperature because it's bubbling out of the pot a little bit. Okay, demi-glaze is looking good. I'm gonna turn that down. The pan is hot and ready for my broccoli. So again, try to try to put down the flat sides into the pan, and we're gonna let it get a nice brown before sauteing. So I'm gonna have to test my patience here as well. All right, there we go. Um, open up your spinach bag. I did that ahead of time. So I am gonna be ready to add it in the butter and the salt and pepper once the time is right. Again, we're giving a little stir to our soup, which I'll plate up in just a second. And our demi-glaze. Yeah, see my instinct when I hear that crackling is just to jump on in there, but don't do that because we want some browning. Okay. I'm just moving it back and forth, guys. I'm not tossing around. So I think the soup is gonna be ready to go. So you can just pour it in your soup bowls. I decided to switch things around this week a little bit. Usually I put dessert in these bowls because it looks so pretty. But dessert went on a plate. The chef really did it well for me here. So make sure that, um, that I get this right. Um, so you can, the soup should be nicely seasoned all, already. But if you want to add a little salt and pepper when you've tasted it, go for it. Yeah, Chef Rich is really great at seasoning things ahead of time. And then we've got three awesome garnishes. Okay, let's see, before I garnish the soup, um, allow broccoli to brown before stirring. This has a chance about five to six minutes. Add one tablespoon of butter per person. So we'll do that in just a second. But my pan is probably pretty hot. Yeah, I'm seeing the browning, but I'm going to give it a little bit more. Get rid of our big pan. Uh, oh, yes, garnish. So um, top with, uh, we've got some pickled shiitake mushrooms here. Again, more crazy umami. Let's plate those right down. Don't take the pickling liquid out of there because we've got some liquid already that's going to be in the form of the chili oil. Um, so we're going to do a little, little work around on the chili oil. A little bit of heat and then the freshness of the green onion. Sprinkle it all around. And what this also does is give a great texture to the soup. So funny, I really thought that the one in front was going to be um, the Instagram shop. Well, let's see. Let's see which one comes out better. Okay, the broccoli ready to go. We're gonna add the butter, melt it away. We got two minutes left on the short ribs. Give a little stir on that. So once the butter is melted, it with some salt and some pepper. Oh yeah, that's got some nice brown to it. Rich will be proud of me. I waited that whole time. Now the spinach goes in and just give it about 30 seconds. I want to give out uh, some shout outs to some really special people this week. Um, Howard and Lisa are back, so I hope you guys are watching the video. Thanks for ordering for us again this week. And then um, Jackie and James, huge supporters and wonderful neighbors of Play. Um, you guys have been incredible. And every time we seem to go into lockdown or decrease, you always seem to be right there to pick us up again. So thank you. Okay, I'm going to turn this off now so that we don't kill the uh, spinach too much. Ah, let me show you the soup. So there is our parsnip and miso soup with the pickled shiitakes, uh, chili oil, and scallion. All right, move those along. And let's get to our main course. Read the instructions. Um, begin by plating the potatoes in the middle of the plate, followed by the broccoli and spinach beside. Okay. 
Let's see how I did on the timing. Perfect. Let's give that a little stir. And we even made it easy for you to do dishes this week because we included these containers that you can heat everything up and just very important, make sure to take the, the lids off the containers. All right, uh, let's see. I'm gonna go with some tongs for this guy. So the Parmesan should have melted in there nicely. Got these beautiful baby potatoes and they're roasted with um, rosemary and Parmesan and the smell is just wonderful. Um, I didn't talk about the red wine. We've got an amazing Shiraz. Not something that you see a lot of in our meal kits, but uh, Connor this week decided to go a little more, I guess, mainstream in terms of the varietal, but this is a really unique Shiraz from Langhorn Creek in Australia. So a slightly cooler growing area because it's um, this particular one is Adelaide Hills. Well, let me make sure I got this right. Yes, yeah, so just southeast of Adelaide in the Langor Creek region. So as opposed to the really hot regions of, um, of Australia. Okay. And so it's got a little bit of fresh acidity too. With the short rib, we, we want some of that. Okay, with the broccoli and the spinach going on the side. All right, now your beef short rib, which should have a nice little crust on it. If it's coming out of 20 minutes, going on there. And last I check, we're gonna do a little salt and pepper. You've already got it on the, um, the broccoli and spinach, but make sure to be generous with the salt and the pepper on both the potatoes and on the short rib. And now for the demi -lays. Now this is going to offer some wonderful moisture and a little bit of fat to the short rib. Now I would say do the short rib first so that you make sure you get that. And if you got some sauce extra, you can just do some around the plate. Because demi glaze also works really well with the potatoes. All right. Clean it up. Looking good. Our beautiful braised beef shirt rib with the roasted fingerling potatoes with rosemary and parmesan, um, some charred broccoli and spinach, and of course, the beautiful demi glow. Thanks for ordering. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being with us through this crazy journey. 